Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be starting the uh, build vlog for the mini CNC machine. I'll put a picture up in the corner. So, uh, uh, I'm not going to do, and this isn't going to be a complete tutorial on building it, but I am going to kind of hit some of the highlights because if you're interested in building it, kind of help you out because there's no instructions come with this. So, one of the things I do is I keep my iPad handy and I've got. Um, the page on GearBest uh, marked, and um, there's a couple of videos on that page I've I've watched as well as I, I you know just building it from the picture. It's pretty straightforward, and having built several uh, similar you know machines in the past, and also some from scratch, I'm kind of familiar how it how it should go together. I think the most difficult piece is going to be the Z-axis. So what I want to jump into uh, first is um, as you can see here we've built the frame. And one of the pieces uh, for that, you get a couple bags with T-nuts in it. And you want to use the bag for building the frame. And I believe they're M5 T-nuts uh, here. So it's marked M5 something 23 in Chinese on the bag. So these are the ones now, as far as the, um, the slotted rails or the maker rails, uh, you'll get two sizes. Um, there'll be four short runs. So one, two, three, four short, and three long, one, two, three. So you see where they, they go. Then also the short ones go on the inside, and then obviously the uh, 90 degree corners go on the inside, and the back goes all the way to the back, and then um, to the front here. So what I usually do is uh, kind of assemble it kind of a little bit snug, and then square it up once it's snug, and so this is uh, where we've gotten to. So this is a basic build here. Obviously this is the, the table. Now one of the other pieces that I've done is I've also tapped the open end screws. So these are quarter 20s. The one up here is actually a number 10. So for some reason the diameter of this one is smaller even though it's the same as um, these. So the biggest thing is so I can put end caps or other fixtures on here once I'm finished with uh, the build. So it's just kind of easier to do that. So kind of a build tip. Tap them uh, before you build it. So uh, anyways, this, this completes the frame. So kind of, you know, this will be chapter one and then chapter two is when we start uh, doing the uh, bed assembly. So we'll see in chapter two. Well, here we are chapter two. So uh, got a lot of the the uh, components, the X and Y placed on there with some of the motors mounted. Uh, we started the Z assembly. So far, knock on wood, it hasn't been too bad. We got the rods. We're just getting ready to actually mount that in here. One of the things to note um, with these pseudo bearings or slides, they always go to the outside. It's one, one of the things I figured out from the Russian interpretation of the video. Um, so same for here and here, as well as here, here, and here, here. Uh, and also on the uh, bed, we've also assembled the uh, bed. So same thing goes for there, so a little bit of a tip. Um, they are rather tight, and I think that's one of the things that provides some of the anti-backlash, is how tight they are. It is smooth moving, but they are tight. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move on with the assembly process, and we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Okay, here we are for chapter three. So a couple things I want to cover out. We, we've got everything basically assembled save for wiring the electronics and I'm going to save that uh, for tomorrow in a different uh, build vlog. So uh, chapter three is going to close this one out, but there's a couple pieces that I want to uh, share with you that I ran into and how I solved them. So number one, the motor or the spindle uh, going in here. So one of the things, if you watch the Russian video, this collar slides, this is really magnetic, slides in here. Well, I had to take the collar off because I couldn't get it to fit. And if you look at the, on the GearBest page, it shows the motor or spindle like this, whereas the Russian, so there must have been some change uh, in this. But this, you cut the paper and you just take out the screwdriver and it pops right off. So that was no big deal. And so the, the uh, spindle mounted in there just fine. Um, the uh, other part is for the bearings. So they seem to shorted me um, these bolts. I'm not sure because I think these are these are M5s. So I'm not sure what size those are, but they gave me a zillion M5s. 
and they shorted me four of these bolts for the two other access. So I used the M5s and, and squared them up. Um, I'm not the, not the most happy with that, but it does work. So I'm not going to worry about it, and I, I may, may switch that out in the future. Um, as far as the electronics goes, they gave me a zillion of the brass, these brass standoffs. I mean, holy peets. Look how tall that is. I mean, I don't know why. Um, but they didn't give me enough to even make this uniform over here. So what I did is I just used my own nylon standoffs. Um, and it was just easier. The other thing I had to do is none of this made sense as far as the hole alignments. Um, for mounting to this it, it it seemed in the video it was almost ad hoc mounted so what i did is i drilled out made these larger for the m5s and put in the t-nuts and um, this should also help it stay a little bit square too i'm probably going to laser cut another bracket in the future because this one's just so wanky because the other one which is also interesting it goes in here, but the if you look at the holes where it aligns, the, the holes don't even match up. I'm, I'm not even sure what the logic is. So these two pieces are kind of crazy. Now, the other interesting piece is it comes with these two holes, and it shows it on the Russian video. But now I'm trying to see. There's uh, also in the bag, though, it comes with these. Uh, am I getting in frame there? So these, these are the... Um, um, you know, to with with the um, lugs on them, so you know with the blocks, and so I, I'm not sure why I got these and these. The one thing I can tell you is that I, I don't know if you can see over here, and then still over here, I've got a ton of extra, <laughs> extra parts. It's actually almost humorous um, the number of extra parts I actually have. So I've even got a whole nother set. Uh, I've got all these, which I have no clue what they even go to. A whole nother set of anti-backlash nuts. Am I getting that in there? Yeah. And springs. I don't understand. I, I'm assuming the springs might have been for some anti-backlash. But I, I see no... Nothing in the Russian instruction video indicates that. Um, nor do I see any place one would go. And nor do I have any backlash that would have to be adjusted that I can see in this. So... Um, I don't know. I get a whole lot of extra parts, so it's kind of interesting. But uh, it did go together pretty easy so far to to this point. Um, I'm trying to think here. It's a little bit after nine o'clock at night. Uh, I think I started it around three, so it's it's taken me about six hours to get to this point. Yeah, about about six hours. I did take I did take to eat dinner and everything in between. So probably about five man hours to assemble this. Now the other pieces be aware of is these have no connectors on them. I you know made the assumption when I purchased it, like most other kits, they they would have connectors on it. And I just plug all this into the the CNC shield. It's just a typical CNC shield, nothing fancy here. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed there aren't heat sinks on here, but I think for the cost, I'm not surprised. So I probably get heat sinks and put them on the uh, ramp drivers um, however not major because I ran my um, laser without them and it's it's fine so long as you don't put too much workload you can run them without um, but uh, so yeah you will have to do that now it comes with some kind of the funky almost like DuPont clips you know like they pulled the end off the other end off the DuPont clips and what you're supposed to do I think is, is crimp these on here so what I'm simply going to do is peel these back, solder and heat shrink them, and then hook it all up. Um, so it shouldn't be that major. Now, some of the wiring of this, um, if you're not familiar with the CNC shield, I, I've done several videos on this. Um, might be a little bit difficult in, in wiring because the other thing you have to do is you have to pick up the spindle wire from here to drive this relay for the motor. So the motor, I believe, is a 24-volt motor, while the rest of the system is a 12-volt system. So you do have two power supplies, uh, as, as you more than likely saw in the unboxing video. Um, so the 24-volt obviously goes to the spindle, and 12-volt powers the rest of this um, stuff. So anyways, um, uh, you know, not too bad. So I'm going to do another um, build video. Uh, 
video log. It's, it's getting late, and I've been at this quite a while. Um, when I, you know, if, when after I wipe the electronics and get it working, and I'll show you guys. The other thing uh, that is a little bit, I can't really say disappointing, but uh, uh, it doesn't have the pass-through shaft, so you can't put a knob or, or turn it. So the only way you can actually make this move, you can't make it move manually. Um, except for through, you know, electronics or, you know, through a G-code center. Oh, the other thing, uh, I almost forgot, um, these rods for the X and the Y. Mine were about a millimeter off. I made the assumption from watching the Russian instruction video that these were all universal. Well, the, well at least mine weren't. Mine were about a one millimeter difference because I assembled this and it didn't go together quite right so I took it apart and started looking at it again and the um, these are longer there I put the longer ones here and the shorter ones here but what I also had to do to keep this from 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 bowing in and to keep it square is I had to put a washer on on one side because um, the rods weren't long enough and so what was happening is it was pulling it in and I couldn't move the well it took a lot of force to move the the um, z-axis where you know I can turn it with my fingers now it took a huge amount of force to turn it so I put the washers in here and here that fixed that I also did the same although I down here because I used the shorter ones uh, on on yeah this is the Y sorry the Y the Y and this is the X so for the Y what I did is I had to put two washers one on this end and one at the far end so this one got two washers this guy got one washer to keep it from because these wanted to bow in these wanted to bow in but the uh, washer I just used like a number five washer worked fine um, so if you if you're gonna build it beware of that um, Outside of that, the rest of it went together pretty easy and pretty quickly. Like I say, um, I took about five hours of, of true man work to get it to build the mechanics of it. Um, I think the electronics will actually probably take pretty close to the same amount of time. Probably about four hours to wire it up and figure it out and get it all going. Um, so uh, we'll let you know how that goes. So anyways, uh, I'm just starting to ramble now, so it's getting late. So just uh, if you found this interesting, uh, again, I'll put a link to this down below. Give it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to swag shop. Subscribe will be coming up. If you're already subscribed, hey, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video blog. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.